another Go Mad video. Yes, they just seem to never end, don't they? You know? And yep, we have one more. We are doing lesson 2.7. This is correct, my friends. And we have the Tiger Dudes, which I know from the last video, I bet that means this problem has something to do with hiking. Yes, one of my favorite things to do when I'm not making videos for you guys. Hey, hey, hey. Now, we're going to look over here, and it says interpret the remainder. That is the topic of today's lesson. Of course, we want to move right into the essential question, which is our porpoise. I mean, our purpose. Porpoise is a type of dolphin. Purpose, yes. When solving a division problem, when do you write the remainder as a fraction? Ooh, it sounds a little scary, doesn't it? Are you sure you want to take this on, Mr. Wara? You could get hurt. Well, you know what? I'm going to take that risk. I say we move on. Okay. <laughs> Unlocking the problem. It says Scott and his family want to hike a trail that is 1,365 miles long. Sure. Yeah, I'll do that in a day. Sure. They will hike equal parts of the trail on 12 different hiking trips. How many miles will Scott's family hike on each trip? Yeah, I have friends that do the Pacific Crest Trail, uh, the PCT as it's known, and they do something similar too, equal parts of the trail. They get to see the whole trail. Yeah. Okay, now it says when you solve a division problem with the remainder, the way you interpret the remainder depends on the situation and the question. Sometimes you need to use both the quotient and the remainder you could do that by writing the remainder as a fraction, and we're going to look into this, but I think this guy might be blocking something. Is he not? This little family here, Scott and his family, yes. It look like little clues or something. We'll put you off to the side here. Let's go ahead and circle the dividend you will use to solve the division problem. There. I have circled the dividend I'm going to use to solve the problem. And now I need to underline the divisor. And that's going to be the 12 different hiking trips. Yes, my friends. All right. So here's one way. Write the remainder as a fraction. OK. First, divide to find the quotient and remainder. Then decide how to use the quotient remainder to answer the question. It says the blank represents the number of trips Scott and his family plan to take. Oh, I know that one. Yes, pick me, pick me. Yes, I think that is the divisor. And there you have it, my friends. The divisor represents the number of trips Scott and his family plan to take. The blank represents the whole number, part of the number of miles Scott and his family will hike on each trip. Hmm, that's interesting. It represents the whole number part. Not just the whole number, the whole number part of the number of miles Scott and his family will hike on each trip. And that is what we don't know yet. And I'm going to say, yes, that is the quotient. So let's go ahead and put quotient in that spot. Yes, and the blank represents the number of miles left over. You may guys might know that as the remainder. Very good, very good, my friends. So let's go ahead and start solving this. So now we'll go ahead and we will see how many times will 12 actually go into uh, 1,000, the 1, it can't do that. It can, however, go into the 13. So we can say that it's going to go in there just one time. I can see that. 12 times 1 is 12. Leave me with one left over. Now I'm going to go ahead and bring down my 6 right here. And 12 will go into 16. I like to draw my little arrow like so if I can make it somewhat neat. Now I have, oh, that goes in there one time as well. Look at that. And then we just subtract again because we always subtract when we're dividing, never adding. And then we can bring our five down, right? We just keep following this pattern. Math is full of patterns. Ooh, yeah, that's why I love math. And then 12 goes into 45. Well, it's not going to go in there exactly because, well, 12 times 4 is 48. That's a little bit too much. So we're going to have to say three times is going to give us 12 times 3, which is 36 last time I checked. I'm going to need to regroup here, so let's go ahead and borrow 110. Now we have 9, so we end up with a remainder of 9. 
Yes, the remainder represents 9 miles, which can also be divided into 12 parts and written as a fraction. So in this case, we could say, since we were dividing by 12, we can put the 9 over 12, like such. Okay, now it says write the quotient with the remainder written as a fraction in simplest form. Okay, so Scott and his family will hike, well, in this case, we have 113. That was how many miles. And then this, following the instruction here in simplest form, well, I see a common factor of a 3, don't you? I do. And then that ends up being 3 over 4, 3 quarters. So we're going to add on that remainder, miles on each trip. So what did we learn in this activity here? Well, first of all, we definitely learned... The big thing that we learned here was is understanding what we do with the remainder. And in this case, what we did was we took the remainder and we represent the remainder as a fraction. Okay? Because that is nine twelfths. And why was that significant? Because we were actually dividing you know miles and it would be important to know how many miles. And we can't if we just say one hundred and thirteen that doesn't give us the most accurate. We could estimate and say it's about 113 or 114 miles, but in this case, we wanted to actually find out the exact distance they would hike uh, every part, whatever part that was. Yeah, not never every, every day, but 12 different hiking trips. Okay, my friends, time to move on. Okay, time to turn the page. Bing, boo, whoa, hiker dude, yeah. Hiking. You're kind of big. Okay, I guess I'll let you say this at the time being. You look like you're covering up our problem. But let's take a look here. This is another way. Use only the quotient. Okay. The segment of the Appalachian Trail that runs through Pennsylvania is 232 miles long. Scott and his family want to hike nine miles each day on the trail. How many days? Will they hike exactly nine miles? Now it says to, to divide to find the quotient and the remainder. So the hiker dude is in my way. So let's make you mega shrinky. Shrink. All right. There you go. You're the perfect size now. <laughs> so now look at this. I say to myself, I'll say to myself, does nine go into 200? Could I take two hundreds and actually distribute them evenly? No. Not with nine, but I could if I went and I said 2300s, and that's what I'm basically going to do. I'm going to say nine goes into 23 then. Ooh, I'd say two times, and we end up with 18, and then I'm going to subtract. I need to regroup, yes, and then I end up with 13 minus eight, which is five. And of course, that's zero, so I'm just going to leave that blank. Yeah, bring my two down. Come on down, number two. Yeah, bring it on down. All right, and then I have nine goes into 52. How many times? Ooh, I'd say about, what, six? Ooh, six is too much. Must be five. That's 45. I'm subtracting again. I need to regroup. Take a 10, borrow a 10, load a 10, whatever, and then we end up with seven left over. And I'm out of digits here. So for the time being, I'm just going to say remainder seven. Now since divide two, find the quotient and the remainder. We did that. Check. Since the remainder shows that there are not enough miles left for another nine-mile day, it is not used in the answer. So they will hike exactly nine miles on each of the 25 days. Does that make sense? Think about that for a second so that you understand why it says that we're only going to use a quotient this time around and we're not going to be using, you know, like setting up as a fraction. Because here what we did was we had a certain amount of miles that they were going to hike, 232. See, Scott and his family, they want to hike just nine dial, blah, 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 nine miles each day on the trail. That's it. They just want to know how many days will they hike exactly nine miles. It just means that they will hike exactly nine miles, okay, for 25 days. Now, a remainder seven, it's kind of not important, right? They just want to know how many miles, or how many, I'm sorry, how many days Will they hike exactly nine miles? Let's say that again. How many days will they hike exactly nine miles? Twenty-five. All right. Sounds good to me. 
let's see what we got down below here. Oh, the hikies. Didn't we just see you up there? Oh, my goodness. That was a pretty neat trick, dude. Yo, dude, how'd you do that, man? Oh, and you got another one over here? Oh, okay, we're getting blasted by the hiking dudes. Hiking dude. Anyways, other ways. We have other ways. Add one to the quotient. Okay, what's this all about? What is the total number of days that Scott will need to hike 232 miles? I like how this information is all based on the same content, the same word problem, but they're kind of presenting different questions based on that information. It says here, to hike the seven remaining miles, he will need one more day. This is true. So Scott will need then, yeah, 26 days, okay, to hike the, the full 232 miles. And here it says, uh, this is to add one to the quotient, because remember, that was the 25 was the quotient. We added one more if he was going to hike all of that, which would be 26. Now, here it says use the remainder as the answer. See, if Scott hikes nine miles each day except the last day, aha, how many miles will he hike on the last day? I like how they switch that around. And then this is the remainder is seven. So Scott will hike. Yeah, seven miles on the last day. Wow, very fascinating how this problem. Oh, hiking, hiking, hiking. Okay, oh my goodness, you guys, you're blinding me. Although you seem, for the most part, to be out of the way. I like that. It says, try this. A sporting's goods store is going to ship 1,252 sleeping bags. That's quite a few. Each shipping cart tin can hold eight sleeping bags. How many cartons are needed to ship all of the sleeping bags? Okay, it's problems like these or word problems that makes me think of the old RDW method. I believe that's what it is. It's the read, the draw, and the write. And of course, it's really reading the problem and understanding the problem. Sometimes I have to use the other R too, called reread. A sporting goods store is going to ship that many. Kind of like I think that's my dividend right there. Yes. Can you say dividend? Yeah, I knew you could. And then it says each shipping carton can hold eight sleeping bags. That sounds like my divisor. That's right. Can you say divisor? Divisor, cool. All right. How many cartons are needed then to ship all the sleeping bags? You can see how this is set up as a division problem. All right, they actually even started doing it for us. How nice, okay. Eight, obviously can't go into 1,000. If we run the 12, we get 1,200. That works because 8 will go into that. Here's your 8 because 8 times 1 is 8. We subtract We have 4 and we write down our 5. Now we continue. 8 goes into 45. I'm thinking not 6 times. That's a little bit too much. We're going to have to go with a 5. And 8 times 5 is 40. Okay, 45 minus 40 equals 5. This is so weird. They have some digits in different places here. I'm so used to just doing the problem. Okay, and now we have 52. Now my 6 will work. Yes, it will, 6. And then that's going to be 48. I'll have to regroup here. And I end up with 4. I end up with the remainder of 4. And it says, since there are blank sleeping bags left over, that would be 4, then the question here becomes, blank cartons will be needed for the sleeping bags. Okay, so, yeah, looking at that 156, that means that's how many cartons, right, you would need. 8 goes in each one of them. But we're going to have four sleeping bags left over. You need to put them in something, right? You can't just like throw them at the, you know, throw them at the guys. Hey, here they are. No, you have to put them in some kind of box. So you're going to have to add one. So that means this is going to go up to 157. This last carton is just going to only be half full. All right. There'll be a spot for four more if they wanted to add them. Anyway, yes, that was my problem. And we move this hiking dude. Anything important on here? Explain why you would not write the remainder as a fraction when you find the number of cartons needed in the. Okay. Yeah, this is a. Hey, should we put you on top of him? Hey, you guys are doubles. Twins. <laughs> hey, um, so. Okay, get serious, Mr. War. So find the number of cartons. Well, the reason is we wouldn't put this as a fraction because these are whole cartons. They're holding sleeping bags. Okay, so we're not. Like, it's not like distance or time. This is full carton so either you have eight that makes it full or you don't if you know what I mean which makes me think of the old uh, yes the mathematical practice let's take a look at those we're back on the front page here I have something hidden here behind dun, 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 dun. okay mr. war really 
you should cut back on your coffee, I think. Don't you think? Anyway, so way I can make this come to the front. Order bring to the front. Yeah, thank you. Woohoo! All right, so these are a couple of mathematical practices. This one here, I think, is mathematical practice number two. It says reason abstractly and quantitatively. This quanti quantity refers to about the number. So it says I can use reasoning habits to help me contextualize and decontextualize problems. What does that mean? It just means here, when you contextualize them, it says I can take numbers and put them in a real world context. We had a real world problem in here with the hiking. And it even gives you an example. See? And you have these in your OneDrive folder. Isn't that cool? So you can get access to these whenever you want. And then, of course, decontextualize is just the opposite, where you're given a word problem, and then we're able to write the equation, and this was the opposite. Okay, time to do one more. Yeah, and we're going to bring him to the front. Come to the front. Yes, get to see some of my stuff here. Whoa, modeling with mathematics. Did we do any of that? A little bit. Symbols we did. Yep. Yeah. Concrete models, and maybe not so much over the pictures. We did have real world situations, some oral language. But model with mathematics is really, really important in this mathematical practice four. I had to look, couldn't remember which one it was. <laughs> anyway, it says I can recognize math in everyday life and use math I know to solve everyday problems. And it lists these things. You can make assumptions and estimating and to make a complex problem easier by, again, making a model, identify important quantities, and use tools that show the relationships, how they're related to each other, connected. Evaluate my answer, make changes if needed. Anyway, my friends, this is, I know, I just want to get a tissue. The video has once again come to an end, you know, but don't fear. Underdog will be here. No, I'm just kidding. Underdog's not here. He's a cartoon. I mean, this, there will be another video. Okay, my friends. Now, live long and prosper.